Okay, um, as far as uh, injuries, everybody should be good. Cooper's the only one that'll be out, which we kind of knew that already. So, guys, go ahead. Uh, I talked last week about wanting to get the run game going. What strides did you see against San Francisco and where do you want to still see growth? I think there were some positives. You know, we, um, you know, we were able to create some removal, do some good things. I thought guys strained to be able to finish. It's an excellent front that causes a lot of problems in terms of some of the different things that they can present. Well, it's going to be a similar challenge. You know, I got a ton of respect for this defense. They pose challenges on all three levels. They're really well coached. Um, you know, they do a great job of being able to make you pay. And they've got an identity and enough complimentary mixers to keep you honest. But it's about making sure that we're targeted right, playing with the techniques, the fundamentals, straining to finish. And it really takes all 11. You know, the quarterback, Matthew, does a great job getting us in and out of some of the things that we're hunting up. Uh, but then in terms of working in combination, it was a big deal to be able to have the same five guys continuing to work together at them. Tight ends are a big part of that, as are our receivers. And then the backs being able to press it um, based on whatever that concept is that we're running. And um, I think better backs make better blockers. And Kyron and Ronnie and Blake do a good job of that. But we got to do it. You know, it's it, we, we've always talked about it. I see better than I hear. Um, and if we have some early down efficiency, that's when we can be at our best like any offense. Uh, but the enemy has a say, and it's going to be a great challenge this week. Watching the film on Caleb Williams, what have you seen in the last couple of weeks, especially up to this Sunday, that make him a detriment, you know, that's, that's detrimental to you guys' defense, your defense? Yeah, Nick, he's, I mean, I've watched this guy for a long time, whether it was when he first started playing at Oklahoma or, or at SC, and he is a, he's a stud. All the accolades um, that have been earned based on his body of work and his resume, and uh, he's checking all the boxes. You can see he knows what he's looking at. He can process. He can play within the pocket, play with the timing and rhythm, uh, deliver the ball with accuracy and anticipation. And then when things do go off schedule, he's he's a nightmare to defend because he keeps his eyes down the field. Um, he can extend plays in the pass game, but then he's also got the athleticism and the strength and the instincts as a runner to be able to tuck the ball down and, and do those types of things. And so. Uh, he was the unit. I mean, he was going to be the number one overall pick for a long time. I think that's been earned, um, and he's a great competitor. You know, that's the one of the things that you look at. I, I, I think he's a tremendous competitor, and um, we've got our hands full. And, and he's got some really good players around him, and then obviously familiar with you know the good coaches that he's surrounded with as well. Any uh, practice squad call-ups? You know, I, I think um, there'll, there'll be a possibility of that. Usually what I'll wait to do, Gary, is we'll get through today's practice. want to make sure that Davis Allen's, you know, back is feeling good. And then there might be a couple little flexibility things. But uh, those decisions I usually make right after this. Um, where's Akello Witherspoon? He might be a guy that's a candidate, you know. Okay. So he would be a guy that's a candidate for possibly um, getting out there. You know, he's, he's a guy that obviously has a body of work that speaks for itself. He's familiar with what's going on. Um, you know, getting him back and really because he didn't have a training camp, these last couple weeks have really represented. He's kept he kept some he's, he has kept himself in such good shape. But getting out here, moving around, just some of the everyday drills and movements that are asked of a corner position, a little bit different in real competitive settings. But this might be a week that uh, he would be one of those guys that you're asking about. And, and you, just one follow. You, you touched on you know how continuity helps you guys sure. get consistent. Mentally, for you, like going into a it's week, also coming positive. off a win yeah. and, and not having to worry about or be concerned about who's going to be up, who's going to be down. Yeah, how, how it's going. helpful. You know, I think the most important thing is is the one thing that you do realize, and you know this, Gary, is that there's always things that inevitably come up, and you have to be able to navigate that. When there are less moving parts relative to the players you're playing with, you know, you get a chance to develop the continuity, but also say, all right, let's continue to figure out what we do best that might fit based on who the opponent is. And so um, every week is always a good stress, though. You know, I mean, you, you get ready for these games, and there's great players. They're well coached on the other side. And um, to try to put together a good week of preparation, ultimately go play at our best in that window of time we're allotted is, is always a good positive stress. But... It is better to not have to make those decisions, uh, you know, based on some of the injuries, and so that was a positive for us. Understanding you're going to be worrying about the roster mechanics later, but for Xavier Smith, fair to say, likely to be held in this week. Oh yeah, yeah, he'll be up, and you know, we've got, we've got, you know, unfortunately or unfortunately, we've got some roster uh, ability to be able to move some different things around with the injuries that we do have. So whether or not he's another flex on the, you know, from the practice squad, or whether we actually, you know, put him on the active roster. Those are just more mechanical things, but he'll be returning punts and kicks. He talked about, you know, just 
how continuity plays a role. Uh, having now gone through this week of practice, have you seen kind of a difference in, in the way that you guys have been able to prepare for this game? I think there's been some improvements, but you know, it still is it's a new week of preparation. Um, you know, we've got some guys that are very experienced, and then we've got some guys that are still continuing to learn and understand how to utilize some of the things that we can anticipate uh, to help them with their post-snap responses and recognition of things. And so every week there's always growing and learning, but to answer your question, I'd say yes, it's been a positive, uh, but Chicago presents different challenges. Um, you know, than what the Niners did. And while they might have some similarities, there are some nuances and some differences that make the week challenging. And, and then ultimately, you know, hopefully those guys go play well on Sunday and we do a good job of preparing them without overwhelming them with unnecessary information. Coach, earlier this week, you spoke about the attributes, qualities, and characteristics that you look for and like in your coaching staff. Yep. Because iron sharpens iron, how have those coaches, how have your coaching staff, how have they, um, how have they helped you increase and grow as a, as a coach and as a man? I think by modeling the way with the things that we talked about. You know, when you see guys handle adversity the way you're saying, man, I hope I would handle it that way, or I respect the way that they've gone about that, or the humility, or, you know, the consistent energy in times when you're saying, man, I'm, I'm not really feeling like I would like to in terms of being able to bring the, you know, attention, the right vibe, the enthusiasm. So I think it's the way these guys move. You know, the most important thing, hey, how do we act, interact, and respond? And I believe you become the company you keep. And, and fortunately, when you're surrounded by a bunch of guys that um, your motivation is to not want to let them down. And then when you see the way that they move, you're saying, man, that is a good thing to try to mimic and emulate in your own way that's authentic to your personality. That's how they've helped. Um, you know, as coaches, there's there's a positive competitiveness that they all have to push the envelope, to see where is the trajectory of this league going, that we can provide advantages for our players, continue to understand our players in ways that um, maybe I'm not familiar with that maximizes their skill sets. And um, all those things have been, you know, great illustrations of what I've seen from them. And, um, and I've been you know, proud to be associated with these guys.